Good morning, everyone. It seems that we have come to the final few chapters of our very silly tale, Blame Hounds. Uh, I can't wait to see how this all ends. At the end of the last chapter, a pug called Sancho had just taken things a little bit too far. Okay, let's find out how this is going to end. Chapter 9, Sancho. Sancho was a pug who lived in the country of Tripova. For many years, Tripova had been in a bitter war with Banginta, the country next door. Each day, Tripova would send a missile over the border as revenge for a missile that Banginta had sent the day before. Missiles came and missiles went. And everyone had forgotten who had fired the first one. They had even forgotten what they were fighting about. The one thing they did know was that Tripova and Banginta were not happy places to be. Everybody wanted the war to be over. If only someone would say sorry for something. Sancho saw this as the perfect blame, and he was the dog for the job. So one day, Sancho stepped in front of the guns and took the blame. There he is down there. The people of Tripova and Banginta were over the moon. The guns went quiet at last. The armies of both sides lined up on each side of the border to welcome the presidents of Tripova and Banginta in their shiny cars. The world's press filmed and snapped the two presidents as they shook hands over the peace treaty. This is a wonderful day for the proud people of Tripova, President Smakia said. Indeed said President Wakya. At last, this terrible war is over and the good people of Banginta can sleep safe in their beds once more. Look at that. The president's shaking hands. And who's down there taking the credit? That looks like Sancho to me. President Smakya nodded. Who would have thought, he said, that this small dog was to blame all along? Indeed, President Wackyer said. He wagged his finger at Sancho. Bad dog. With the money from this, Sancho thought, I'm going to buy a butcher's shop. It was at that very moment that a small girl walked past all the soldiers and up to the presidents. Uh-oh. She tugged on the sleeve of President Smakya. President Smakya and President Wakya looked down at her grubby face. The cameras of the world's press flashed. How, asked the girl, can a small dog be to blame for a war? Pretty good question, isn't it? Chapter 10 rumbled. The game was up. People all over the world started to wonder why it was always dogs that were to blame for everything. They began to think again about everything that had been blamed on a dog. They pointed fingers, got into wild arguments, started punch ups and took out court cases. Back at the Blamehound's base, dogs got out while the going was good. Norman and Ringo watched as their dreams crumbled to dust and their staff did a runner with all the biscuits, bones and balls they could carry. My dear Ringo, Norman said, I believe we've been rumbled. Quite frankly, I never liked your stupid plan anyway, said Ringo. 
So he can say more than sausages. Chapter 11. Next. Pooey! Olive howled. Something's crawled up someone's bum and died. Gregor sniggered. But who took the blame? Ah, it seems we've got someone else to take the blame this time. Well, that is the end of that very silly story, Blame Hounds. I hope you got a laugh out of that. Um, and tomorrow, I thought I would go back to another childhood favourite. So tune in to find out what story we are going to read tomorrow. Have a lovely day, everyone. Bye for now.